so comprehensive and it's really, it gives you so many dialogues and takes you, you know, by the hand, step by step by step. But what it really is doing is, is giving your mind over to the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit for help in, in this unwinding, we could call it unwinding your mind. And it's really, ultimately, what it boils down to is simplifying your decision-making process. Because with the ego, it's very, very complicated. It's very complex. So, really all this is a tool for, it, just like with the Course, it's designed to simplify your decision-making process. What's the larger context of that? Well, in the Kingdom of Heaven, pure abstraction, pure love, pure oneness, the communication is, is actually not called communication, it's called communion. Christ communes with God. And, and in this communion, it's, it's, it's silence. It's, everything's already known, so it's not a communication of words, it's just an experience of Jesus calls it the, like an eternal dance, like this, the forgotten song. It's a, it's a song, it's a song, it's a dance, it's a communion. And that we could say is a state of pure being, pure beingness. And in pure beingness, or uh, you know how uh, Byron Katie says, loving what is, pure isness, there is no choice at all. So that gives us the context that in oneness there is no choice. Even in the Matrix movie, when Neo finally makes it to the architect, uh, the architect tells him, the problem is choice. And how different is that from our human experiences, where we're always being bombarded with information saying, the more choices the better. Why would we have big fancy careers, unless we wanted more choices, or better choices, <laughs> or more variety? The variety is the spice of life, more choices. If you have more money, you have more choices. You know, it's kind of the way it goes in this world, when actually heaven is a, is a state where there is no choice. There's nothing to decide between in pure oneness. So what, how do you get to heaven? What comes before heaven? Well, let's talk about perception a little bit, and let's talk about consciousness, and let's talk about awareness, that it would have to be that the way back into to pure oneness would be a choiceless awareness. That would be the perfect gateway back into oneness. Unified awareness, quantum field that the, the, the quantum physicists talk about, or Rumi with his beautiful poetry, there is a field, I will meet you there. They're talking about choiceless awareness, which is just the forgiven world, it's the happy dream, it's, it's unified perception, singular perception, let thine eye be single. It's all come to us in so many ways. And so when I say simplify decision making, that's our goal, is choiceless awareness. We can't really have heaven as a goal because it's just what is. And as long as we believe in time and space, then trying to choose something that has nothing to do with time and space would be an unrealistic goal. Or even in The Course in Miracles, you know, it, it's saying free will does not mean to establish the curriculum. You know, it's, it just is bringing us closer to making a decision to open up to this choiceless awareness. Uh, this Course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is far beyond what can be taught. So, we're not talking about love in the context of teaching and learning, but we are talking about choiceless awareness in the idea of teaching and learning. Teach only love, for that is what you are. Uh, God's teachers are not perfect, or they would not be here. And so they come to teach perfection over and over and over until they learned it. When Jesus uses three overs in a row, <laughs> you better believe it's going to involve dedication and devotion, three overs in one sentence, uh, and perfection. And, and it's great because sometimes we're raised with nobody's perfect, and there is no body <laughs> that's perfect, but what we're aiming for is choiceless awareness, uh, coming to such a state of acceptance that we laugh, we remember to laugh, and we 
experience a state of mind that's so pristine and so unified that there's no choice. It's a ha 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 experience. Now, okay, let's come down. We've got oneness, we've got choiceless awareness. Then we come down from choiceless awareness and that's where we come into the simplification of decision making. So let's look at that for a bit. There's a quote in The Course in Miracles that says, a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. So that's going to really help us come to choiceless awareness. A decision, a decision, any decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. You see how that fits in with Buddha, with Jesus. Buddha said, empty the mind. Jesus says in lesson 189, simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts that you've ever learned before. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught. Forget this world, forget this course, and come with holy empty hands unto your God. In that lesson, 189, he is saying the same thing that Buddha was teaching, that you must empty your mind. Because why is that so important? Because a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. And if you believe things that God didn't create, if you have an ego belief system that has, we'll say, layers and layers and stacks and stacks, of beliefs. Some of you saw Inception, the movie Inception with Leonardo. Layers of dreaming. So many layers that you forget <laughs> that you're dreaming. You take it as very real and then you, you have layers and layers of false assumptions that are there. So that's really partly what the title comes from, Unwind Your Mind Back to God. That unwinding is really unwinding from a false belief system, and regardless of what our bodies are doing, regardless of the circumstances and situations that we perceive on the surface of consciousness, what's really happening is there is an unwinding occurring underneath, and we are unwinding from an unconscious belief system. Now, decisions are continuous, Jesus says in the rules for decision section, he says decisions are continuous, but you're not always aware that you're making them. Um, sometimes, to give an example, it would be like, let's say we have a, a five-year-old little girl, and she notices daily as she's going along in her life that her mom and dad are fighting more and more, and the fighting goes on very intensely for two or three years, and then finally, when she's eight years old, her parents decide to get a divorce. And they split up and the little girl goes with, we'll say, the mother. It's quite interesting that a lot of times children will take on the blame, will take on the fault for thinking that they did something. If they had only behaved differently, if they had been a better child, they take on the blame for the divorce. And so we'll say if the little girl has this feeling inside like something terrible has gone wrong in her world, and she takes on the, the blame, the cause for the divorce, and maybe goes on in her life, and maybe she's in, we'll say, <coughs> hypnotherapy and psychotherapy, and she's in her 30s, and it starts to dawn on her mind some, you know, 20 some, 30 some years later, like, wow, I've been holding on to a lot of guilt because of the belief that I caused my parents' divorce. That's an example of a conclusion that's been made. And it's a decision that was made that is now become this unconscious belief and it's been influencing her interactions with her family, with her parents, maybe she's, she's married, it's inter influencing her interactions with her spouse, and even if she has children of her own, it's influencing all those interactions because this is a decision that has been pushed out of awareness in the unconscious mind, and it's, it's a belief. There's a belief down there, and it's just running what's on the surface. You know, she goes through the day, she's, she's semi-depressed, she doesn't have a lot of energy, 
It's like that Beatles song, you know, Paul McCartney and Wings. Do, 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 do. It's just another day. Do, 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 do. It's just another day. It's she's going through life, and there's lacking vitality and everything, and there's something underneath there that has not been raised up into awareness. So that's really what we have an opportunity to do this weekend, tonight and tomorrow. We have, we have the ability to start to speak from what's going on. Where are the challenges in your life? Where are the struggles? Where are the difficulties? And start there and come together calling upon the Holy Spirit to speed up the unwinding, to speed up the loosening from those beliefs, to actually bring beliefs and thoughts and emotions into the surface, into the conscious mind, to speed up the unwinding, the unraveling, you might say, like to peel the onion. This is going to be a speed up in peeling the onion. And how practical that is. That's, that's the most practical thing for me. You know, I've always liked inquiry, I've always liked um, really taking a close look instead of jumping to, to conclusions of who did what to who and with what caused what, it was more, oh, let me take responsibility for my state of mind. Let me look inward, let me introspect instead of project, projecting the blame, let me introspect. Let me find out more clearly about this decision making that's going on because I want to go from being unconscious to being fully conscious to experiencing choiceless awareness and then remembering God. That's kind of a, a map of the, the road we're taking. Simplified decision making, which is exemplified like in the Course, Holy Spirit decide for God for me. It's very practical. Whatever decisions are facing you during the day, you always can come back to that prayer. Holy Spirit decide for God for me. Really what's underneath that prayer is, help me simplify my decision making. Let me make no decisions without you. Let me be joined with you in the decision making because that's going to be the unwinding. The Holy Spirit is the how. It's not like we need to memorize a formula, a mantra, have a special kind of position or a special kind of breathing that we find to make them egoically against God which is not unwinding, it's, it's more batting down the hatches and saying, oh, I'll just make the best of it, of whatever I've been dealt, I'll try to make the best. But, but when we try to make the best in a worldly sense, we look for worldly solutions, form solutions, and it's really like tires spinning in the mud. You know, we're really not going anywhere. The ego would like to make us think, well, we're working hard, and keep at it, keep on the grindstone, but, you know, this is, this is not that. So, like Francis was saying, when we come, we're here to go with you into the actual experience in your mind and zoom in with you to wherever there's a stuck point, a challenging point, and to, to have that loosening. And we can all feel it together. Fix yourself anymore, just unwind.